Hey, hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of The Smart Flip with me and Matt. Glad to have you guys on and watching. Today, guys, what we're going to be doing is we're going to do something a little different. We don't have a guest today, but um, we're going to be going over the most common questions people ask when it comes to phone flipping in general, starting a business, growing a business, and things like that. So um, let's, uh, let's get started. By the way, um, if you want to come on this podcast, we are taking applications for that. You can reach out to me directly. We'll probably eventually have a little thing down there to qualify you and make sure. Uh, but we are looking to bring on more people that are in the beginning stages of their business, intermediate stages of their business, and kind of scaling their business. And you can basically yep. get free advertising for your business using my uh, YouTube channel. So as long as you don't try and scam people, we will vet you, you know, all of that good stuff. <laughs> if you scam, you're dead. So, no scamming. No scam. No sc so uh, with that being said, guys, we're going to jump into the most common questions that, that we see all over the Internet. I had chat GPT pull up um, the, mo the 15 most common questions people are looking or asking whenever they're starting a phone flipping no, business. Me. So... Um, okay. With that being said, let's uh, rock and roll. So first one is, where can I source phones and electronics for flipping? Matt, I'm going to let you kick this off, dude. I feel like this question, first of all, let me say, guys, there is such a real thing as the curse of knowledge. It's when you know something and you forgot what it was like to not know something. So I think this is a really great question, but in all honesty, this question is so simple to answer. Like, I guess I want to respond by saying like, where are there not electronics? Like walk out of your house and go places, pawn shops, online marketplaces, Facebook, offer up Craigslist. There are auctions. Like I drove past, I was picking up an electronics morning. I drove past three auction spots that had signs out front with their web domain literally on the sign. And I was like, there's a place to source. There's a place to source. There's a place to source. Who uses electronics? People. There are people everywhere. So there are electronics everywhere. It's like, a, I don't know. I think there's this, this myth of like, but where do I get stuff? People like, hey, look, I have one of these. Do you know someone that has one of these? Oh my gosh, you know somebody who has inventory. Um, hey, do you know someone that plays video games? You know somebody that has inventory. Do you know somebody that, well, this is maybe an older audience that once watched DVDs or like v VHS or something? <laughs> like, hey, there's somebody who has inventory. Like, people are consumers, and consumer electronics should tell you exactly that. Like, consumers have consumer electronics, so they're just out there in the world, man. You just gotta like, it's like going to a well to draw water, right, Chris? Like. Once you kind of find out where these wells exist, you can go there and get electronics all the time. So it's pretty straightforward. But, I mean, that's true. I mean, everybody and their brother and their whole family has electronics nowadays, right? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, like the first place that I always recommend sourcing whenever somebody's getting started is like start with your family, start with your friends. Yep. Like really post on your Facebook profile or wherever you have the most socials or all of them, be like, hey, I'm starting an electronics business. I'm looking to buy used and damaged phones, MacBooks, iPads, smartwatches, cameras, and et cetera. That's You'd it. actually be surprised how many people give stuff to you for free. Straight uh, up. Because like they just don't want them anymore, right? My mom gave me five digital cameras that were no longer working or she just didn't want them, you know? Right. And you can help some people clear out their place. Like that's the best way to start. And I tell people that and they're like, you know, but I don't want to, I don't want to bother my family. I'm like, what? You're giving them money. Like, what are you talking about here? You know, like you're either giving them money or you're helping them clear out some stuff that they weren't using anyway. Right. You know? Space so, margin, the ability to yeah. take other stuff and put it in that drawer. Like, so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the most common places that, you know, that I, we always recommend is obviously we got Marketplace, we got OfferUs, we got Craigslist, we got all these different places, but then you got Facebook ads, Google ads, and, and referrals, and, you know, there's a lot of places, pawn shops, uh, repair yeah. shops, carrier stores, um, yeah. guys, like any place, like, so we were on a call last week, actually, I think, 
with uh, whenever Matt was doing his console Kings call and they gave me the bright idea. I was like, Oh wow. Cause I, I just bought 50 something VR headsets from, from a, a VR company. And I was nice. like, huh, I wonder if there's any other VR companies and something dawned on me during that. And I actually called three to four of them during the console King calls. Yep. And three of them took my number because they get broken stuff all the time. You know, people break the VR stuff. Yep. That's money. You know, like the same thing goes with the repair shops and, um, and stuff like that. So, and last week I wasn't getting any leads for the day and I just started calling tow truck companies, you know, just straight up cold calling them. And yep. I didn't have any phones, but you know, while I wasn't getting any leads, I was like, you know, I might as well try go out there in the world, talk to people that have electronics, you know? So, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So that's where you guys can source. There's, there's in numerous ways to do this. Um, you're only limited by your own action in that way, really. Um, yep. You can knock doors and get electronics. Like I'm actually getting a lead right now. Here, I'll answer it. Oh, I missed it. Let me actually call him back. <laughs> Let's go. I just left from making a pickup from a lead. Yeah. Uh, never mind. That's Google calling me to sell, try and sell some more stuff. Never mind. <laughs> I know that 469 number. <laughs> <laughs> We can help you improve your Google web. Yeah, yeah, that you yep. don't have um, but, uh, all right. So the next question we got here is how do you well, verify if a phone or electronic is stolen? Matt, you want to start off with that one? Well, this is the, this is the common fear that everybody has. I'm going to start doing this and I'm going to be taking advantage of, I'm going to get scammed. I think it's interesting that, that is the exception, not the rule. The majority of deals I do, like 99% of them are full on legit. And maybe the remaining 1% is, oh my gosh, this person's trying to take advantage of me. Like if you have a decent BS filter, like if you can kind of just be a, a fairly effective judge of character and validate the person and the product before you meet them and meet them in a safe public space, like you don't have a lot to be concerned for. Um, people have this common fear that everybody is out there to scam them. And I think you have to turn off these cynical and uh, that portion of your brain that wants to distrust the entirety of the planet. Um, those people are out there. Chris has gotten scammed. I've gotten scammed. You stay in any business long enough, you're going to have bad experiences. And that's not just flipping. That's it's anything. Perfect. Like that's anything. And so like, if you, but if you come in to this game with that thought in mind, like if I say, hey, don't think about pink or purple elephants, your brain immediately starts to think about them. It's like, hey, don't think about scammers. It's like, oh, now you're fixated on scammers. It's like. Now everybody's you, a scammer. Right. Like, OK, so if I go to get a pizza and I'm like, oh, man, I hope there's no bugs in my pizza. What am I going to be fixated upon? Are there bugs in my, you know, what I mean, time like. I've never had bugs in my pizza, but if I suddenly started thinking about it, that's the thing that's going to emerge to me. Yeah. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? You get caught in this feedback loop that confirms your own bias. You don't want to start a business with that mentality in mind. Like, don't, don't do that. Like, be a good judge of character, validate, filter the situation, the person and the product. And you should have an excellent or, dare I say, pretty close to good experience. Um, I don't know, Chris, what do you think? No, I think that's... Uh... I mean, that's, that's a really good point, right? Whenever you, whenever you come into the business, whenever you think that you're going to get taken advantage of, that's usually when you will is because like you're, you're actually looking for it. Your brain is, is constantly searching for it. And we see this a lot whenever mm -hmm. like where people join and let's say like, let's say they get a return request on eBay. That dude is immediately a scammer to them. Immediately. <laughs> they want right. to return the item. Honestly, it's probably your fault because you're new, like going to be real here. Like you yeah. probably didn't, you probably missed something in the, in the description. Okay. Yeah. Especially if it comes with like game consoles and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. the likelihood that somebody's going to scam you on a game console is incredibly low. Very like, low. Like I would say 95% of the time, it's actually your fault. I'm just going to be real here. Like yeah. now on phones, it's a little different. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. phones are very high value. They are, uh, commonly reported stolen, right? Mm -hmm. For insurance purposes and stuff like that. Now, here's how to avoid that. 
So number one, um, first thing you want to do is whenever you meet up with the person, you want to run the IMEI or you can run it beforehand, whichever you prefer. Um, it really depends. Okay. Like if somebody's traveling from a long way to meet me, I will usually ask them to send the IMEI number so that I can check it. Okay. The next thing that I will do is I will be like, Hey, can you bring, um, I, I require a bill of sale for, for, for this type of item, anything with a serial number, anything with a IMEI number, basically. And I'll be like, can you bring your driver's license with you? Because, you know, I'm going to do yep. this, bill of sale yep. and everything. And the yep. likelihood that somebody's going to report something stolen after signing a bill of sale and and letting me see their driver's license is right. very low. That's right. a really good way to filter out the bad people. Okay. Yep. And yep. another way to do this is meet up in a public location that has cameras. Likelihood that all of those three things, you get the IMEI, run it, it's all good. Two, you um, you do the bill of sale, and then three, you meet at a public location with cameras. The likelihood that somebody's going to scam you after all of that is very low, very, very low. low. After that point, it actually usually becomes your fault. Like, there are certain cases, okay? But once again, that's the exception, not the rule. Like. Right. Um, I had a guy on my YouTube channel the other day, what he, you know, he was basically saying like everything I buy is stolen. Right. Like, <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, like, um, there was, so I bought a, um, a passcode locked, um, iPad from a pawn shop the other day. This guy goes in my comments cause I was sharing how to do it. Right. Uh, because a lot of times, uh, pawn shops, their employees aren't, they aren't the brightest sometimes when it comes to electronics. So sometimes <laughs> they'll buy an iPad and it'll be pin code locked, but there won't be an iCloud on it. So if there's not an iCloud on it, it is very easily able to reset. And yeah. you can take it home, connect it to iTunes, reset it, it's a brand new iPad. Okay, I yep. do that pin all the time with iPads. iPads and MacBooks. I make yep. great money doing that. Um, am I taking a little advantage of the pawn shop? Yeah, a little bit. Like, but it, you know, their employees don't care. They got a sales quota. Well, you you right? know something they don't. That exists in every industry. Exactly. Yeah, I'm just, a, you know, loophole, right? <laughs> um, like, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, reset it for them, right? Um, right. <laughs> but, like, you know, I had a guy in my comments the other day. He was like, oh, yeah, everything. There's no way a pawn shop would sell that to you. It must have been stolen. And I'm like, you, you know what, dude? You're right. This receipt that I have doesn't make it just doesn't make any sense like not real it's fake i faked the whole thing you know so but i made 195 dollars in profit on it so i guess it wasn't super fake right so <laughs> but once again stolen items blacklisted it's the exception not the rule now if you're buying new in box devices all the time you're kind of asking for it i'm just going to be real with you like the likelihood that they're financed and they're going to get reported is very high. And how did I learn this experience buying them? Yeah. So I don't buy a whole lot of uh, new stuff. So, um, so I, to be clear, guys, I think phones, I think you do have to walk a little more cautiously. Yep. Uh, yep. If you're going to start off and we, we, Chris and I suggest this, like the best entry level stuff to flip is basic consumer electronics like yep. camcorders, cameras, video games, VR headsets, video game consoles, controllers, all that sort of stuff. Like you don't even need to ask people for their ID. Like what, what are they going to, oh. oh, your gamer tags on here. I know your gamer tag. Oh, yeah, like right. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's a non-issue. So yeah. stop spazzing, get off the couch, go flip some stuff. Let's get it. Yep. Let's get this bread, right? Come on, y'all. All right, so what's better to flip? Uh, and then the question here is mostly iPhones or Androids. But I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go towards the the full market here, right? So what's better to flip? iPhones, Androids, game consoles, VR. Like what is the best thing to flip, right? So I'm gonna answer this first, and I'm gonna say the thing you're most comfortable with. I like that. So like if you are very familiar with PlayStations. Start with that, you know. If you're familiar with Nintendo Switches or you're familiar with uh, iPhones, like start with what you know, like, and then go from there. Grow from there. Like yeah. once you start 
you know, uh, mingling around in the electronics, it's not bad. Like most things work the same way. So, <laughs> um, you know, you just got to put that 20 hours in, right? Like if that, honestly, um, yeah. small like, learning curve. I mean, I had to learn how to, you know, look at VRs and understand how they work. How long did that take me? Not long. I just downloaded, you know, I just downloaded Beat Saber and started playing it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and figured it out pretty quickly, you know. Oh, that sounds like a pretty fun learning experience to me, Chris, if I had to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was. It was great. So, <laughs> I mean, like that was my first experience with it. And that's, mm -hmm. that's how I learned is I just, I tried it out and I played it. And then yep. from then on, I know what to do. Yeah. So, yeah. so my, the best thing to flip in my opinion is the thing that you are most comfortable with that you've been yeah. working with for a little bit now, or yeah. you've been playing on, or you've been, yeah. I don't know, whatever, you know, whatever, like if you're not, so here's a good example. Whenever I first started in this business, I did not start with iPhones at all. I started with Samsung's and LG phones because that's what I had. I was broke, you know? So I had the LG Cricket and Samsung phones, right? That's what I started flipping. I had no idea how to even operate an iPhone. So, yeah, start with those. And I actually yeah. just bought like 40 of those the other day, like those lower end ones. Um, bought them all 40, for like five, $5. 40 ones. Uh, like the lower end LG and oh yeah, Samsung phones. I bought like uh, there was a company that was that was offloading a bunch of them. Oh okay. I bought them all for like five dollars piece. So that would be nice. nice. Yeah. Considering cool. that some of them sell for thirty, forty, you know, ad spend phones, right? Like that sure. deal will pay for my ad spend for Google Ads for like two months. Yeah, and I don't think I think that's great because I don't think that. I think people sometimes get caught up on like the where's my hundred, hundred and twenty, two, three hundred dollar yeah. flips. Everybody wants a big fish, and it's like, yeah, you get, you're going to catch a couple big fish, but you know what? You know, most of the ones in the net are probably going to be like smaller to like medium sized, and so I think that's the staple of any business. That's awesome. Base hits, you know. Yes, bro. Yes. Um, what's the best thing? To uh, I think for sure. Yeah, dude, I, I built my business off base hits. Um, I'll respond to this question simply by saying the person who asked this question, I think is looking for that silver bullet answer. Like, let me, let me get the one singular golden gem, you know, like reductionist, like perfect. No, just resell what, you know, what Chris said, but also like, um, reselling, reselling stuff. Like what's the best thing to resell? It depends. OK, if you're I mean, there I, I look at this, there are three types of people. There are people with no experience. There are people with some experience. There are people with a lot of experience. Each one of those three types of people are going to probably start at a different starting line. It's kind of like golf. You have like the the T for like the pro level. You got the T for like the medium term and then you got the ladies T, right? Like they each have a different yardage because each person's capable of blasting that ball further. So like or the junior T wherever, you know, like, OK. Like you probably can't hit it pro distance if you're just starting in this game. Um, so maybe you should start a little bit closer to the pin. Um, so like, what does that look like for you? Uh, the, the, the easiest, most low hanging fruit or low barrier entry items within this business are, I would say, basic consumer electronics, video games, VR systems, uh, video game consoles. Uh, that That is what I teach in Console Kings. That is what you can start. I got a guy, you know, I've got people starting with, 50 to hundred bucks. And I got people starting with 500 to a thousand dollars. Right. So what am I going to encourage them to flip different items? If you can throw a little bit of money, I mean, you're going to get a higher end, probably VR system, or, you know, you might go buy a bigger bundle. Right. Um, but regardless, I could tell every one of those people like, Hey, go buy this, go buy this or go buy this. And Chris could do the exact same. If you're in Chris's business and you're starting with like three to five grand, he's going to say, Hey, let's go ahead and get you set up for Google ad spend. Let's get that money, you know, flowing in because those deals are coming to you. And by the way, also start doing reach outs because you don't know, don't want to neglect the simplest base hits in the game. Um, anybody that is doing this full scale is is got already got multiple avenues coming in, right? They've got that three legged stool, right? Because they're they're standing on business. Um, but everybody else has probably just got one or two legs, okay? But even still, 
you know, start with what your experience level and income level allows you to be capable to do. I'm going to say that one more time. Start with what your level of experience and income level permits you or allows you to do and go from there. If you only have 50 to like, let's say $300, then Facebook offer up and Craigslist, Facebook marketplace is what I mean, are going to be your, your absolute most favorite places. You could use Nextdoor app too, to go and find deals, right? Or just friends and family. And then do that for 30 days and don't even come and ask us, what should I be doing? Now? Don't even think about expanding till you've gotten some base hits and some reps in the game, right? Like, cause you need experience married to the knowledge of what has been shared with you. And then you start to become a more dangerous business person. And I mean that in a good way. That's my response. I like it. I mean, it, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So start with what you know, right? Mm -hmm. um, all right, so the next question here is, should I focus on newer models or older models? So um, once again, I think it comes back down to like, what are you going after, right? Yeah. So let's say VR systems, let's start there, right? So all of them have value, yep. every single one of them, right? So the Quest 1's still selling, still selling well, honestly. Headsets, yeah. not so much. Controllers, gold, right? Money, money. So I think if you focus on, you know, <clears throat> well, let, 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 let me put it this way. Yeah. iPhone 5 probably shouldn't focus on it. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> not much there, right? Just be real, okay? Um, iPhone 8 Plus, there's still something there. Right. Yeah. So I don't discount the older devices sometimes, right. like especially yeah. if I get them with newer devices, I will still buy them. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, every single electronic has value. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I a lot of people will just go after newer models. Like, you know, I have a lot of like people that are like, you know, I just want iPhone 13 and newer. And I'm like, bro, I buy like iPhone 11, like on a daily basis and make 60 bucks in profit almost every time, you mm -hmm. know, like that's worth it. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of older devices, I, I just call them ad spend devices a lot of times. Um, like I just use the profit I make from them to basically spend more on ads and get more leads. Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, and on the newer devices, like, typically the profit actually isn't as good as the items that are kind of in the middle. Right. So example, yeah. I make more money off of iPhone 12 pro max and iPhone 13 pro max than I do off of 15s. Okay. Like the other day I bought a crack 12 pro max and I made $160 in profit on it. I don't really do that with 15s. Right. Because people know what they got. I mean, they do I mean, be, be real. Yeah. Like, the newest phone, right? So, yeah. um, and it, isn't it interesting how the newest devices, and I think this this applies across the board, the newest devices of any kind of variety, because they're a little bit hyped up, like the margins aren't as beautiful as people think. It's like, you know, something I talk about, and I, and I know that you have a full on awareness of as well, Chris, is like everybody wants to fixate on the thing that's new. Or like the thing that's like really cool, which oftentimes the new thing is the really cool thing. But like the the real good money is in the thing that's not quite new, but yeah. still been around long enough to like for people to kind of get bored with it. Yep. And it's like iPhone 12, iPhone 13, perfect examples. Like you could probably make Valve more Index. money off of, right? off of buying one of those. Valve Index has been around since 2019. And I just bought my fifth one today, literally picked it up before this call in the last three weeks. It is like a bread and butter staple in my business. But like people now are kind of bored with it. Like they're not interested in it. And I I bought it for the beautiful price of $300. And I'm going to go make 700 bucks off of that item. Uh, probably a little more than that. It's like, you know, it's just an interesting. Should we buy old or new? Let, buy what makes money. Right. If the new stuff isn't making you as much margin, why are you chasing the new stuff? Because it's new. Like if if older stuff is still like a, can be a little older value, too, because sometimes people want the sexy, cool vintage things where it's like, oh, bro, this game over here is worth 90 bucks. Everybody's chasing that game. Yep. 
Yep. What about the game that's worth 15 to 20 and you could buy five of those with that console and two controllers for 70 bucks. Go buy that deal. Right. Yeah. Forget about the other stuff. Like, I think, I think again, it's just interesting how people's attention it like it fixates in the stuff that is not going to be the most profitable stuff. And I don't know, maybe that's why, maybe that's why Chris and I here, you know, we're making the big bucks, right? Like so that we can share these responses with you guys, but whatever. Well, I mean, like, so, I mean, there, there's two ways to go about this, right? You can either focus on volume or you can focus on profit per device, right? Sure. So if you're doing bigger numbers, then, you know, obviously volume might be a better way to go for you. And volume, you might want to work on phones, right? Yeah. They're small. Yeah. They can be packed easily, stuff like that, right? Yeah. But like last year, you had, I believe it was a 72% profit margin. 78. 78. Okay. That is insanely high. That is tr almost triple the margin on phones and it's less devices, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you, it's three you times as game. much as what most people make flipping on Amazon. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. it really depends on which way you want to go. So, I mean, I focus on all models, right? Yeah. Like, why not? Yeah. Like I will still make an offer. It, what drives me crazy is like, I got a, I got a comment the other day on my, uh, Facebook Live in my Facebook group, which you guys should join, by the way. Um, uh, there, the person was like, "Dude, I'm I'm getting like leads for like two dollars, but all of them are like less than iPhone 12s." And I'm like, "Okay, and, and like <laughs> make offers, dude. Like, yeah, yeah okay, <laughs> you know, like I still make offers on iPhone X and iPhone 11 and even iPhone 8 Plus. I offered." 15 bucks the other day for one she didn't take it but that's okay not not a big deal for me you know like what what a lot of you guys don't realize is the person behind that iphone 8 plus probably has a newer phone they're probably not still using the iphone 8 plus i bet they have other electronics too right chris probably do yeah like every person is a potential you know hundred dollars every not to you know make people sound like dollar bills but like <laughs> Every week, it like could have a hundred dollars behind them. I mean, if you think about it that way, it's kind of a game changer, you know? Right. So, I mean, make so, the offer. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I think the the limiting belief that you're kind of poking at here, or that this sort of exploits, is each person is only good for one device one time, yes. and that is a very yes. constrained way of looking at how you want to cultivate a business that brings in reciprocal customers that you know is a revolving door of repeat business i bet every person knows somebody else who has an electronic device i bet every person also has multiple devices and i bet those people that they bring in have multiple devices right so it's like how do you turn one fish into 12 or whatever uh right it's it's not about that one deal right it's about relatability it's also about you know customer service yep. and also about seeing each potential customer as like opportunity for more and i bet if you're kind and you treat those people well and you you know pay them a small referral bonus for like increased opportunity how compliant are they going to be to try to help your business and bring more money in for you and so like yeah i mean you're you're so incredibly good at that chris and like i know that um you know to to the to the guy who commented earlier all the devices chris buys are stolen no your comment was stolen guy um the <laughs> Chris is Chris is excellent at customer service. He really is. Um, and one one reason I believe that, and we did a whole podcast about this, so I'm not going to be on a soapbox or anything, but I just want to say like, you know, if you treat people like they're humans, um, incentivize the opportunity to get more increased business from those people and um, just are a generally like nice person, your business is probably going to go pretty good. And that one iPhone X or iPhone 11 or 12 that you bought from that person is probably going to also become a Nintendo switch along with some other video game device or whatever else electronics they have thrown into a drawer at home that they completely forgot about and didn't care to make money on anyway, because they weren't even thinking about getting paid from that stuff. 100% man. I mean, that's, that's how it is. Right. So yep. like a lot of people will, so I call them one night stand flippers, right? Like, sorry, my laptop's about to die. Let me go get my 
charging cable, guys. I'll be right back. No problem. I'm gonna hit this home. Thing. Um, so I I have this kind of saying where like a lot of resellers are what I call one night stand type of flippers, where they they go in, make the whole thing transactional, and then they just leave, and they never talk to the person ever again. Like so, I'll give an example. I was on a resell deck onboarding call with a client one time, and he took a lead call during our call. And, you know, I thought it was a great opportunity to listen. And here's how he answered the phone. He was like, hey, what do you have? Oh, okay, iPhone, iPhone 12, what's wrong with it? Oh, it's cracked? Gotcha. Yeah, best I can do is 50 bucks. Oh, you don't want to sell it? All right, bye. That was his conversation. Like, that was that. It's I'm summarizing here, okay? But like, that was his conversation. It it took like, I was like, bro, what in the world? Like, hey, what? you that suck. Dude is never right. gonna call yeah. you again. Like, <laughs> the way he answered, like, number one, he didn't answer with his business name. He just answered, hey, and you could hear the guy on the other side. He was like, Do you buy phones? <laughs> you know, like. It, the awareness sometimes is, is mind boggling, but this is also like why in Recelerator we do mock phone calls every yeah. now and then is to make yeah. sure people know how to actually talk to people on the phone. Because um, that's a that's been lost. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah like that's truly. a skill that's been lost. And truly, like mm-hmm. nowadays, I actually I prefer the phone call, like, which mm-hmm. is funny. And I was talking about this uh, with somebody else, and I was like, oh. We we talked about this on the customer service podcast two we weeks did. ago. Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> go go back and watch that and listen to it if you're the person who's like always sucking with your negotiations. Yeah. Yeah. No, for real. Like, you know, we'll we'll set up a lot of people with with ads and and stuff yeah. and get them leads and they'll start getting leads in and then they'll complain about how they can't close any deals. And guys, most of the time, it's you. You can't you can't talk to people yet. You're not good. Like I'm just gonna be real, and I, this is just me being real. You just suck at negotiation and talking <laughs> with people in general and customer service, and that's okay because if you suck, that means you can get better. Indeed. So ignorance is 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 a is a good thing to have awareness of. Like I, I agree. Every time I'm I become aware of like of me being ignorant of something. It allow it gives me like it gives me a perspective, I guess, to to get better. Yeah. Um, it's like okay, I don't. So this is a great example. Let me give you an example. So I bought quite an expensive software yesterday, right? It was recommended by one of my good buddies, and he was like, "Dude, this thing is the most amazing thing I've ever seen." And I joined and. You know, got me curious. Like, (laughs) once again, like that's a referral thing, and I was like, okay, because he had won an award for marketing with it, and I'm like, all right, I gotta check this thing out. So I did. I got in, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like it is so intuitive that I was like, I don't even know where to start. Like, Mm. so what did I realize? I was like, all right, I need to go to YouTube. I need to watch a couple of videos on how this thing works. I need to kind of get up to par because my onboarding isn't until next monday and i'm like i don't want to wait that long so i'm going to go and figure stuff out by the way Mm -hmm. like anybody that joins resell deck i have youtube videos for everything guys like don't wait until your onboarding call like that side quest here if you just wait to to do something the faster you're just like not going to make money or or not win or like it example what i did is like their onboarding wasn't until next week right so i was like all right i need to go find some youtube videos and i need to figure this thing out and i need to learn a little bit about it what ended up happening i got the thing up and running and it was doing exactly what i needed it to do within about five hours and it'll it's going to make me money because i'm starting a lot of conversations now and it's working very well so that's awesome yeah like so once you have, once you realize that you're ignorant about something, good, just go learn about it. <laughs> Truly, so, yeah, for real. Um, <laughs> we have this, I, we have this really powerful tool. I got to tell you guys about it. 
there's this like really, really powerful tool out there that um, is called the internet. And it has <laughs> a lot of information about a lot of different things and you guys can utilize it. You know, I, you know, I, I always remember back to, uh, do you remember Ask Jeeves, Matt? I do. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Remember that? So, okay. I went, I went to Arkansas one summer with my grandmother years ago and I already knew how to use the internet. I was playing online game. I was, I was doing all the stuff, you know, yeah. I was like 12 years old. So I understood right. how to use a computer very well. And I remember her like bringing it up and she's like, this is the most amazing thing. This ask Jeeves thing. I can just mm -hmm. ask it a question and it can pull up a million answers for me. Hmm. Like that was like coming from the time she was in, that mm -hmm. was an amazing thing because yeah. back in her time, you had to go encyclopedias, libraries, and it took forever to actually get information. I don't think people realize the times that we're living in right now, like where yeah. everything is so accessible at this point. Yeah, for real. So I think, you know, like the knowledge is literally at your guys' fingertips. You just have to ask the question and be willing to search a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And like, I just remember back to that all the time. It's like, man, it's like this thing to her was, was an amazing achievement. And that was like before Google, it was before, well, I think Google was around, but like, yeah. wasn't where it was now. And then right. now we have chat GPT and like all these AI things and it just right. makes the learning process 10 times faster. So yeah. good knowledge guys, um, we went way off on a little side quest there so we're gonna get no it's all good <laughs> um next question is how much can i expect to make per phone or per device so i like to average about 80 dollars per device in profit net profit if possible um yeah. now in bulk deals that's less likely to happen because you're getting more for you know more for less kind of thing but right um, but like I like to average around eighty dollars per device. What do you what do you like to average, Matt, per de per device? Um, fifty to a hundred bucks is kind of a general staple for me, honestly. So eighty, yeah, in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like seventy five dollars a deal isn't super uncommon. Like something within that ballpark is like pretty straightforward and basic for me. Yeah, yeah, so like um. But I mean, I'm I'm I don't really focus or fixate on the dollar amount like some people. I focus more on the ROI, which I know you know. And so it's like, okay, cool. Like, seventy to one hundred percent ROI is pretty standard for just about every deal that I do. And some people might think that that's cap, uh, but that is. I mean, yeah. Chris will tell you. Chris has watched me run my business long enough and do enough calls and deals with people to where you know, doctor is in capology over there, man. Hey. Uh, Hopefully uh, I don't, it's but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, it's just, that's, it's pretty standard and common. Love it. Um, do you need to repair devices before reselling them? I'm going to let you go. Um, I'm, I'm a flipper. I'm not a fix and flip kind of guy. So some people are, that's not, that's not why I got into this business. That's not what interests me. Um, so. I think there's a discretionary space in there where you like you decide for yourself. Okay, is that is that the type of business you want to be in? That's not that's not my focal point. So, yeah, that's not uh, what I focus on with my business. I'll buy broken stuff and resell it, but otherwise, like, no, nah, you can have it. Yep, I only recommend uh, like fixing and flipping if you have the repair experience already. Um, yep. Like like if it's something that's easy for you to do and you've been doing it for a while, then then do it, right? Yeah, I don't repair sure. I tried. I didn't like it, right? I didn't like yeah. waiting for the parts when I could have just flipped it for, you know, a little bit less in profit. Because um, <clears throat> a lot of people, what I what I see a lot of flippers do is I, they try to squeeze every little bit of profit out of everything. You know, right. they, like, they like to, let's put a new screen on it. Let's put a new back on it. Let's do this. Let's do that. Like, and you know, squeeze the next five dollars out of this thing. Like, right. Focus on the cash flow. Like, get your profit, get your cash back, flip something else. Right. Yep. But if you yep. already have repair experience and it takes you twenty minutes, it's worth it. Right. But yeah, like me, Aaron, and Matt, none of us 
Tyler, like all of my, none of them repair anything. None of us do. Like we teach how to flip stuff. We don't teach how to flip and repair stuff. And I'm very adamant about that. Like I will not, I know nothing about the repair side and I don't want to. Yeah. If, if I ever get into that point, I will hire somebody to do bulk repairs for me. Probably Felden actually. <laughs> just ship Fair. them off, get them back. Right. But like what I've noticed is like, I could have just flipped it and got my cash back and then flipped another item the next day. Yeah. You know? So yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, you don't need to know how to repair. Um, now, if you do know how to repair things like game consoles, you can make some big money. We got one student, his name is Ben. Um, mm -hmm. He's the HDMI king, by the way. So if you guys don't know him, you should go check him out. Yep. <laughs> if you own a repair shop, you should be doing HDMI repair because it's like $100, $120 in profit per repair, which is yep. wild. Like, But one thing we did with him was we focused in on his business, and this is one thing we do in Recelerators. We cater our, our coaching towards what the person needs. And uh, I set up game console ads for him, and all he does now is repair stuff, and he buys game consoles, fixes them, and then flips them, and yeah. does insanely well with that. <clears throat> I don't think he's ever turned his ads off at this point. So, I mean, <laughs> one of those things, it, at one time, I had like 30 consoles that he had repaired the HDMI on, so it was cool. Yeah, that's pretty um, <clears throat> Let's go. What legal issues should I be aware of? This is a good question. So yeah. you need to comply with your local laws. Um, so, okay. So this is one reason I like, I really like to sell on eBay is because if you sell locally a lot, you, you have to like do the sales tax stuff. Right. Right. I don't sell locally. So I avoid all of that. I sell most of my stuff on eBay and right. eBay actually takes care of the sales tax for you. So, right. They report it, they collect it, they do that, they do all of that for you. Um, that's yeah. one reason I really like selling on eBay, is because it I it's one less thing, and I am happy to pay that fee. By the way, like for them to do all of that stuff, so I don't have this massive headache at the end of the year, I'm yeah. happy to pay them their fees to do that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, that's one thing. If you're selling locally, you're gonna you're gonna be subject to sales tax um legally i mean if you're doing under the table stuff i mean hey you'll get away with it for probably a couple of years until the irs audits you so you know they go after them small businesses right so uh. Um, uh, and then um i do recommend like llc's definitely recommend that reason being is number one tax benefits is a is a big reason and um that's probably the biggest one you still with me matt Okay. Screen froze a little bit. So, I mean, I recommend getting an LLC around ten thousand dollars in sales. Uh, um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything's looking good on my end, but you kind of cut out there. Yeah, Hold on. Out on my side. Sorry. It's all good. We're good. Um. Give me ten seconds. Yeah, I recommend getting an LLC around ten thousand in sales, not profit sales. All right. That way you can start covering your bases. Uh, where should I sell stuff? eBay, Swappa, places like that. Online platforms. You can sell stuff locally. Um, private buyers, direct buyers are a good one for phones. Um, that'll help you kind of stay safe uh, whenever it comes to buying phones and getting paid directly. Um, and we're going to finish up here in a few minutes. But... Yep. Um, should I offer free shipping? Matt? Um, the question is, all right, so you've got, got two or three different perspectives here. Okay, one, you've got a culture that is being groomed to acclimate to the idea of free shipping. Why? Because of Amazon, right? You can get things free shipped. Like I've actually ordered stuff on Amazon early enough in the morning where I got it same day crazy um but whenever you are looking on ebay to sell an item and this is you kind of need to use ebay as a research tool here you can kind of see okay 
who is who is offering free shipping on this and who isn't. So if you look up solds or you go and use Terapeak as a research tool, if you don't know what that is, Google Terapeak, it's eBay's uh, research and kind of data section where you know you can get like free, um, not free, you have to be a subscriber and have an eBay store, but you can get you know pretty inexpensive, really good numbers to see. And you can see, okay, like who's who's over here like paying for free shipping, et cetera, et cetera. Like, and so if you use that as an effective research tool, or you can just kind of look up sold listings and see who paid free shipping and who didn't, you can kind of make a, a pretty sound deduction based on your insights as to whether if you should pay free shipping or not, right? So um, it depends on the item and it depends on what it is. If you have a very rare item, like always charge for shipping. Why? Because that item is probably not something people are making more of and it's going to be in demand. So eventually if someone's going to buy it, it doesn't matter, right? If it's a super common item, there's probably going to be a more, larger majority of people that are probably like offering free shipping than not. And if it's a, if it's a really like hyped item, let's say it was like the PS5 when it dropped because there's such a massive demand there, uh, I would charge shipping on that kind of stuff too. So like stuff that's like really rare or in high demand, charge for shipping. Stuff that is in the middle, like it's kind of, you have to sort of gauge, all right, what is my audience kind of being groomed to? Are they used to getting free shipping on this or not? Okay. Chris always charges for shipping on consoles. I don't. Um, I'll charge for shipping on consoles for items that are kind of generally $50 or below always. If it, if it breaches above that, it depends on the size of the item. Um, because if it takes up more volume on a shipping truck, then it's, I'm going to get charged more for that. So like, again, there's no like literal direct answer for this. It sort of varies based on the product. And you kind of have to be able to sort of like read and determine um, what it's going to be worth. So bigger items, I wouldn't charge free shipping on because that's going to eat up your profits. But smaller items like like generally basic video games, if you're selling stuff like this, right? I'm always going to charge the buyer for shipping on that. Because, you know, this to ship it is like, I charge $3.95 a game. That's my basic staple, okay? Um, but if I'm if I'm sending out a bundle of these, let's say people buy like nine of these from me, and it's like, I don't know, $70 like purchase, they're probably going to get free shipping, you know? So ho hopefully that gives people some context as to how to uh, kind of take that from there. I mean, my stuff is pretty simple. Um, if it's a phone, free shipping. If it's a if it's a console, usually they pay for the shipping, mm. and that's typically my stuff, right? Like anything outside yeah. of phones, I typically make them unless the profit is extravagant, right? Yeah. Then I would skip free shipping. Like doesn't matter, right? Like yeah. the camera that I'm gonna make two hundred dollars on, uh, free shipping. I don't care, right? Gotcha. Um, yeah. So like it depends, but on consoles, most of the time people don't have a problem paying shipping. Um, yeah. and I usually, it's usually USPS ground advantage. So it's like five bucks most of the time. So yeah. if it's like an Oculus controller, they usually don't care. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. so yeah, uh, those, I mean, good questions, right? So for sure. Um, should I insure the devices that I ship? If it's over $600, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I'm just going to say on that. What's the best way to market my phone flipping business? Um, so I got my six figure framework up here. Um, and basically it goes reach out, social ads, diversity, negotiation, Google my business, stores, resellers, and then repeats and referrals. That's how you market your phone flipping business hey. or your electronics flipping business. Okay. If you want to yep. see that video, you guys can check out my YouTube channel. Um, the, the six figure, um, six figure flipper framework. Um, basically shows you how to make hundred thousand dollars a year as a uh, as a solo phone flipper. You don't need an entire team to do that. Okay, you can do that by yourself. Yep. I've done it. Okay, so do it. <laughs> um, and I did mine with Facebook ads alone. So like with everything we have now, it's right. much it's much more available and you know doable at this point. It'll take about a year or two. Not gonna lie, right? We did have one student recently who he should hit a hundred thousand by the end of this year. And he did it yep. in like eight months. So yep. um, if you, if you cycle up the volume on what you do, um, you can hit it a lot faster. So just, just saying. Um, yep. It's, 
and put up. And we'll we'll end with this one. How do I avoid scams when buying stuff? Or how do I let's let's do how to avoid um, scams in general? Okay, we'll talk about it. Uh, <laughs> well, we went, we went over that earlier on how to buy stuff. So we'll do on the how do I avoid scams on selling stuff? So mm -hmm. I think that's a good way to end this. So mm -hmm. number one, and I shared this with uh, our students the other day, and Abraham actually one of my students, uh, he commented in the chat. He was like, thanks, Chris, for saving our butts. Um, <laughs> so okay. one thing I started doing, uh, specifically on phones, is um, I started, so whenever somebody purchases something, one thing I've been doing is I've been going to their profile, checking their profile, and, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm sending them a message to confirm that they actually read the description of the device. OK, um, and this is a really good way to vet scams as well. OK, if it's going to yeah. go to like a freight forwarding address, which you can just grab the address and Google it and you'll figure out if it's a freight forwarding address or not. But yeah. just to give you guys an example here. So Abraham um, did this. OK, so somebody bought his device and he sent this message. He was like, hey, just wanted to make sure you read the description, wanted you to know that the phone is locked to Sprint and T-Mobile and his finance. Please confirm you're aware of this so I can ship it. Thanks in advance. Um, and then the person was like, can it be used with a T-Mobile phone card? Does it owe money that I have to pay? And he was like, hi, it can only be used with Wi-Fi. It is being sold as parts and it will not work on the T-Mobile network. It has a balance. That is why it's being sold as parts only. Would you like to proceed with this order or cancel? Please let us know before we ship. Please cancel order. Thanks. Saved a lot of time right there. Okay. Yep. So yeah. That's one thing I recommend doing is that right there. Send, yep. the, especially on the higher value items, mm -hmm. send the buyer a message because I'll be real with you guys. Like most people don't read. <laughs> and and then what you guys do, you regular uh, people, you're like, oh, this dude's a scammer. No, they just didn't read. Like, right. You know, most people walk right. around acting like an NPC. So it's like, oh, man. They don't read, man. Like they don't read yep. the title, they don't read the description, they don't read nothing. They just see phone, ooh, price, buy, right? So, yeah. and I recommend yep. doing this with game consoles and stuff as well. Like anything that's broken or used or anything, yep. just like Agreed. confirm that they read the thing. Like, yep. because like that will save you so. And this is something I like have recently done within the last two to three months, and it has saved me all kinds of returns and headaches. So that's one way that you can do it. Um, also having a really good description, uh, which uh, by the time you're watching this, you, my actual eBay description should be available um, in the YouTube description. So check that out. Um, cool. Free game for you guys to help you guys not get scammed. Um, and then hey. obviously with all <laughs> my other free stuff that's available in the YouTube description, you know, we're giving that stuff away to, you know, eventually, hopefully earn your business. Okay. We want right you guys to jump in and then we eventually want you guys to work with us so that we can help you scale your business, uh, buy stuff from you and, you know, stuff like that, and, you know, make yep. everybody happy. So that being said, that's, that's the last question. Um, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them below this video and mm -hmm. uh, we'll answer them. And once again, if you want to be on this podcast and you have a business, or you're looking to grow a business and you're not a scammer, <laughs> reach out to me and uh, we'll get hey. you on. We'll promote your business a little bit, help you grow your business a little bit, uh, all for free on the podcast. So yep. that being said, guys, this has been another episode of the Smart Flip Podcast. Oh, and by the way, if you're looking to start, grow, or scale your business, uh, Resellerator is taking applications. You can just DM me directly and I'll, I'll vet you. We'll do a phone call, all of that stuff. So Right. If you want to, if you want to get started with consoles, you can jump on console, console games and we'll hook you up. In the description below. Yep. So, um, yeah, I guess the big thing is get off the sideline, get in the game, you know, give yourself a shot. You are your own best investment. Yep. All right, guys, you guys have a great day. Keep crushing. And I hope this video helped.